Is this modern art or an audio interface? Maybe both. Let's check it out. Hey, Julian Krauss here, and today we're going to have a look at the Lewitt Connect 6 audio interface. The specialities of this interface are the integrated DSP, the interesting I.O., and that it includes the option to connect two PCs to this interface simultaneously. Before we dive in deeper, full disclosure, Lewitt sent me the Connect 6 free of charge in return for an honest review. Because of that, I'm labeling this video as an advertisement, even though all my opinion and measurements are my own, and Lewitt has no say in the make of this video. Let's start with the hardware and probably the first controversial point about this interface. Its design. The Connect 6 definitely looks like no other interface on the market, and I'll leave it up to you if you like the look of this interface. One thing you can't deny though is that the big knob on the top is very easily reachable, and it lets you easily toggle between different settings, like headphone and main out volume, and also input gain. If you know me, then you know that I'm a big fan of proper audio level meters, and the Connect 6 doesn't disappoint. The big level meters can show you your input and output level, and also indicate where your settings are set at. If there would have been a proper DBFS scale next to it, it would have been pretty much perfect. On the front you can find two headphone outputs, one 3.5mm and one quarter inch connector. The volume for both can be individually controlled, and you can even have separate mixes for each of them, but I'll get more into that when I talk about the software. On the backside you got a plethora of different in and outputs. There are three USB-C connections, one to connect your main PC, and that also powers the interface. The power USB input does exactly what the name suggests. It can be used to power the interface with a smartphone charger or power bank in case your mobile device does not provide sufficient power via its USB connection. And lastly, the third USB connection is labeled mobile, but I find this to be a bit misleading because you can not only connect a smartphone here, but even a second PC. Not sure if this is intended or not, but it totally works, and it allows you to play back and record audio with a second PC or a smartphone connected to the interface, which can be really handy in a dual PC streaming setups, or if you're live with a smartphone and you want to record with a PC simultaneously. I'll get more into that feature when we talk about the software. By the way, the mobile connector also charges your phone while connected, so you won't run out of battery while streaming. Pretty smart. The Connect 6 features one unbalanced AUX input where you can connect to things like a DJ mixer. In the middle you get a 3.5mm unbalanced output and a set of balanced quarter inch outputs. For additional inputs, the Connect 6 has two XLR and TRS combo inputs, which accept line and microphone levels. The important part here is that despite the combo input, the interface does not offer a high Z input. So if you want to record your electric guitar, you have to use a DI box, which I find a bit unfortunate. Quick note on the build quality, the whole interface is completely out of plastic, and that makes it quite light. Then again, the all plastic build is not that impressive for an interface in the Connect 6's price range. Although I have to admit, the interface does feel quite sturdy, and I personally do not have a problem with the all plastic build. The encoder knob feels quite okay, it does have a bit of wobble to it, but it also has a decent amount of heft to it, and that makes it quite easy to control the interface. The glossy black top is a bit of a dust and fingerprint magnet though. In a recent livestream I took the Connect 6 apart, by the way subscribe if you don't want to miss the next stream, and here I have a few pictures of the insides for you. For analog to digital and digital to analog conversion, the Connect 6 uses a Cirrus Logic CS42888. It's an interesting choice and spec-wise a bit lower than what I would expect in an interface in this price range, but let's see how this interface performs in practice. Okay, let's start with the frequency response of the mic input, and as you can see it's very flat in the audible range, even at the maximum gain setting. That's pretty much exactly what I would like to see, and the response actually stays like this, even at lower gain settings, so all in all a very good response. In terms of distortion, the input also performs quite well and you can just ever so slightly see some harmonics coming up at the maximum input level. But they are so low that you cannot hear them, so all good. The dynamic range is the ratio of the highest signal that the interface can capture to its noise floor. Naturally you want this to be as high as possible, so that even when you leave yourself some headroom while recording, you're not introducing any additional noise. Here the Connect 6 comes in at pretty much exactly 100 dBA. That's not really that impressive given the price of this interface. While 100 dB is usually fine for most situations, more dynamic sources like drums might start to be limited by the dynamic range of the interface. For voice recordings this is more than enough though. Let's check out the preamp noise, which is heavily advertised by Lewitt. 
They state an EIN of minus 133 dBV and while this is an impressive number, Lewitt tries to be a bit sneaky here because EIN is normally stated in dBU, so this number is not directly comparable. But that doesn't matter because I've made my own measurements and they are directly comparable and here you can see that the Connect 6 comes in at minus 129.2 dBUA weighted. That's a very good performance and just to give you a listen of how low noise this is, I'm currently talking into a Shure SM7B, which is a very low sensitive dynamic microphone and a worst case scenario for any mic preamp. I will be quiet for a second so you can have a listen to the noise flow of this setup. This is very low noise and here's a bit amplified against some other interfaces. As mentioned, there is really no need for a cloud-fed lift ahead with this interface because they would only lower the noise by about one more decibel, which is hardly relevant in practice. Additionally, the interface has tons of gain, and when I mean tons of gain, I mean tons of gain. With the Connect 6, you can get even very low sensitive dynamic microphones up to clipping no problem, so there's virtually no chance you will run out of gain with this interface. The line input performance is really not that interesting, as with many interfaces it is virtually identical to the XLR input performance. The frequency response is identical to the XLR input and the dynamic range is the same with about 100 decibels. Again, 100 dB is sufficient for many cases, but for the price of the Connect 6 I would have liked to see more here. Distortions on the line input are also at an inaudible level, so don't worry about that. One thing to note though is that the maximum input level is only 5.7 dBV, which means that when you run a professional line level signal into the Connect 6, which can be up to 20 dBV, it will clip. That limits you to use outboard devices that control its output volume, and that's one of the drawbacks of the Connect 6. Let's focus on the output sound quality. The frequency response of the main output is very flat in the audible range, nothing more to say. That's very good. Distortions are at an inaudible level, and the output also provides a decent output level at around 13 dBV. Dynamic range is once again not that great. Here the Connect 6 is even outperformed by interfaces with one third of its price. To be fair, 104 dB is already decent and there's hardly any chance you will hear any noise from the main output, but I think you've heard this sentence a few times now. For its price, I would have expected more. I spare you the 3.5mm output performance as it is again the same as the main balanced outputs, just with a slightly lower signal level as you would expect. Ok, let's take a look at the headphone output. As always, you can find all the specifications in this table here, and the colors indicate how well the interface performs in a certain measurement. I'm not going to go through all of those, that would be just a bit too much. But let's have a look at some specific things that stick out. First of all, one thing that really sticks out is the output impedance. You can see that it is quite high and that can have an impact on the sound when you use low impedance headphones. I made a whole video about this if you're interested, but in short, this can lead to bloated bass. You can see this in the graph here. I've made two measurements, one with a purely resistive load and one with a real 32 ohm headphones. And you can see that with the headphones you get a slight bass boost, which is of course not an accurate sound reproduction. In my opinion, the output impedance of an interface should be as low as possible, and I'm not quite sure why Lewis chose such a high output impedance here. This really limits your choice of headphones if you want to get accurate sound reproduction, because you would have to choose headphones of around 80 or better 150 ohms to not have any impact on the sound. For an interface in this price range, I think this is a big oversight. The next point that sticks out is the noise of the headphone output. With a normal over-ear headphones, I couldn't hear any noise, but if you have more sensitive headphones or IEMs, then there's a very good chance that you will start to hear a slight background hiss. Again, this really shouldn't be a thing on such an interface. The other stats look pretty decent though, the power output is ok and you should be able to drive the majority of headphones to loud listening levels. What's always great to see is that the channel balance is virtually perfect, because the volume is digitally controlled, so your left and right side of your headphones will always be equally loud. Ok, let's check out the software and I want to mention that I only tested this on Windows. Lewitt told me that at the release they are still improving the performance on Mac, but I can't say anything about that. 
On the far left you got your input controls and also the real-time effects, which I'll show you in a second. On the lower right you got your output controls and for each output you can individually set the volume and the sound source, be it direct monitoring an input or listening to a whole mix. You also have two separate mixes, A and B, which you can send to any output. On the input you get an 80Hz high pass filter, an expander, a compressor and an equalizer. Each of these are fully fledged effects with a total control over threshold, attack and release, and each with their own level meter. For each mix you also get a maximizer, which essentially acts as a limiter with makeup gain, and this allows you to push your audio to a higher loudness. If you have no idea how to set up the effects or your levels, there is an easy auto setup feature. There you simply click through the menu to tailor the Connect 6 to your recording situation. Once you've done that, the Connect 6 sets your level and also engages some effects depending on your scenario. The first time I tried it I got an error, but the second time it did work quite well. Although I think the noise reading could be improved a bit because when there's just a tiny bit of louder sound, then the threshold for the expander ended up way too high for my taste. But for a starting point I think that works okay. Of course I checked the latency of the direct monitoring of the Connect 6 and this is imperceptibly low with 0.2 milliseconds at 96 kHz and 0.6 milliseconds at 48 kHz. The high pass, expander and compressor don't add any further delay, only the maximizer adds an additional 3 milliseconds. That's not too bad, though this indicates that the maximizer is working with some amount of look ahead, which can more effectively prevent clipping. Although if you push the maximizer really hard, there's still an initial period where the audio clips. This period is very short, so this is barely audible, but I hope that the maximizer can be improved slightly to offer true peak limiting, which should totally be possible with 3 milliseconds of look ahead. When you hook up a second PC or a smartphone to the Connect 6, it will show up as an input and output and you can use audio coming from this device as an input on your main PC. You can also route audio to the second PC or the smartphone. On the second PC or smartphone the interface will simply pop up as a generic microphone input and sound output. I think this is super cool to have, especially if you're in a situation where you're running a dual PC streaming setup or you want to record with your smartphone simultaneously. The Connect 6 allows you to process your audio and act essentially as two interfaces in one. I haven't seen that in any audio interface in this price range so far and I think that's a really cool feature. Last but not least, let's have a look at the round trip latency. This becomes important when you're not using the internal effects of the Connect 6 and you want to monitor your audio in real time with an effect processed on your PC. Here are the times with 48 kHz and different buffer sizes. And here with 96 kHz. Pretty average times, maybe even a bit on the higher side. If round trip latency is important, I recommend to use 96 kHz because of the reduced latency if your PC can handle it. So should you get the Connect 6? If your primary focus is music recording and you do not need real time effects, this might not be the interface for you. Couple of reasons for that. First of all, there are no instrument inputs, so if you want to record an electric guitar, you can't just directly plug it into the interface and you will always have to use a DI box. It's still possible, but definitely much more cumbersome than with an interface that offers a high Z input. The maximum input of the line level input is also relatively low, so if you use outboard gear that sends professional line level where you cannot control the volume of the output, then there's a very good chance the signal will clip. Third of all, for music recording I think it's vital to have an absolute accuracy while monitoring and sadly the high output impedance of the headphone output can result in bloated bass with low impedance headphones. And with IEMs there's a good chance that you will hear some slight background noise. Both things can be prevented by using less sensitive and high impedance headphones, but this really then starts to limit your choice of cans. On the other hand, if you're in a live streaming setup, especially with dual PCs, or you're recording a podcast and you want to have the integrated DSP that allows you to process your audio straight away before sending it out, I think this interface becomes much more interesting because of the real-time effects, which in this interface are done really really well. They are definitely real-time and there are quite a few of them, so a proper EQ, compressor, expander and essentially with the maximizer also a limiter. Additionally with the control center you get all kinds of mixing and routing functionality, so you can monitor and mix everything in real time and you also have the possibility to include loopback. 
The preamps are also very low noise, which is especially great when you want to use dynamic microphones. On top of that, the I.O. of the interface seems very much catered to streaming and podcasting because of all the additional in and output that lets you connect other audio gear. The second USB connection enables you to use this interface in a dual PC streaming setup, and it can also be used to connect the phone, which could for example act as a sound pad or simply to call someone. So again, I think in podcasting and live streaming situations, this is where the interface shines. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I will see you all in the next one.